We arrived at the ninth video in our series, in which we will have a look at a very special transistor enabling you to actively manage your battery. As you already noticed, the quadcopter has a slide switch allowing you to turn it on. This slide switch is connected to a transistor able to switch off very high currents, as I demonstrate in this video with the motors at full throttle. I will discuss with you the capabilities of this transistor, which will enable you to take the battery management of your quadcopter to a new level. Remember the relation between the battery voltage and the remaining battery lifetime discussed in the third video? A linear regression of the middle part of this graph allows you to estimate the remaining battery lifetime. However, when you put the battery under heavy loads, by for example increasing the motor speed, the voltage will drop significantly without a real decrease in battery level. This reduces your capability to accurately monitor the remaining battery lifetime during the flight by only measuring the voltage. The only way to overcome this problem is by measuring the current. To be able to measure the current, we will use a special transistor called a high side power switch. Two high side power switches can be used in this project. The first one is a switch with a load current of 37 amps. The second switch has a load current of 70 amps. Both switches have seven pins with identical functions and an area capable of conducting the large currents called a tap. To be able to conduct high currents, the positive side of the battery needs to be connected with the tap of the power switch. The current flows out of the switch through pins 1, 2, 6 and 7 and continues to the load, which are the ESCs and motors in our case. The transistor can be switched on when a small current is able to flow between pin 3 and the ground. You do this by placing a small slide switch. When you switch off the slide switch, the voltage between pin 3 and the ground almost equals the battery voltage and the transistor blocks the load current. Pin 5 is very useful as well, because a current proportional to the load current flows out of it. The ratio between the load current and the current from pin 5 is equal to 14,000. This means that a load current of 14 amps corresponds to a current from pin 5 of 1 milliamp. Your TC microcontroller cannot measure currents, but you can still place a resistor to measure the voltage drop. When you choose a resistor to be equal to 510 ohm, the voltage drop for a current of 1 milliamp equals 510 millivolt. This voltage drop is perfectly measurable by your teen scene. Taking into account all ratios, the voltage drop over the resistor is equal to the load current multiplied by 0.036. But be very careful, in the event of a short circuit, the current can exceed 180 amps for some seconds before the transistor will be able to switch it off. In this case, the voltage of the resistor can be more than 6 volts which is way more than what the TNC manufacturer recommends. To protect your TNC from possible damage, you need to place a Zener diode in parallel with the resistor. A Zener is a special diode that does not conduct any current below a certain fixed voltage, called the Zener voltage. For this project, you will use a diode that has a Zener voltage of 2.4 volts which is well below the maximal input voltage of the TNC pins. The relation between the voltage over the Zener and the load current through the power switch is visualized in the graph. The final schematic for the connection of the power switch is given on the screen. The voltage over the resistor will be measured by TNC pin 21. Notice that a normal diode is placed as well in front of the circuit. Because the Zener diode does not protect the TNC when accidentally reversing the battery, the diode lets you protect the TNC from any negative voltages. 
The power switch with a load current of 70 amps already has curved pins and can easily be inserted in the upper quadcopter frame. During final installation, you need to solder the tap to the foreseen area on the frame. The other power switch has straight pins. You need to slightly move all pins such that they fit nicely on the quadcopter frame. Unfortunately, you cannot test the power switches on the breadboard because they require soldering. Therefore, we will only discuss the parts of the code that will be used later for the flight controller. First, declare the variables necessary for accurately monitoring the battery lifetime. The battery used for this project is a 1300 mAh battery. This means that a current of 1.3 amps can be sustained for one hour. In part 3, you already learned how to measure the voltage. Now you will measure the current as well. Remember that the default resolution for analog read is equal to 10 bits. A voltage of 3.3 volts thus corresponds with the digital number 1023. Moreover, you know that 1 volt at TNC pin 21 corresponds with the load current multiplied by 0.036. This means that the current flowing through the power switch is equal to the measured digital number at pin 21 multiplied by 0.089. In the setup part, you will determine the remaining battery level when the quadcopter motors are not running. Illuminate the red LED and read the battery voltage. If the voltage is greater than 8.3 volts, you consider the battery level to be full and equal to 1300 milliamp hour. In this case, the red LED at pin 5 is turned off. If the voltage is lower than 7.5 volts, you consider the battery to be empty and the red LED stays on. In all other cases, you calculate the remaining battery level from the equation we saw on the figure at the start of this video. Now in the loop part, you will continuously measure the voltage and the current. The current consumed can be measured by adding the current consumed in this iteration k by the current consumed in the previous iteration k-1. For the current consumed in this iteration, take into account that each iteration k in the final flight controller will take 4 milliseconds. Now calculate the remaining battery capacity. If the battery capacity falls below 30%, Illuminate the red LED again. So this concludes the necessary code for the battery management part of your quadcopter. You can also choose to completely bypass the power switch as illustrated on this figure. You will miss the battery management features, but most self-made quadcopters do not have these anyway. In this case, the code for keeping track of the battery level is very basic and you will illuminate the red LED when the voltage goes below a certain threshold, such as 7.5 volts. Notice that this can happen already very early in your flight when you aggressively increase the speed of the motors. As already explained, this method is not very accurate, but it might do the trick if you for example time your flights to avoid an empty battery. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe if you like the series and see you for the next video, in which we will start with the actual construction of the quadcopter.